Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Many thanks for the kind invitation. Uh, sorry that the Brussels bureaucrat has to the Brussels weather. Because, uh, 14 Celsius with some rain could be any time in Brussels. It could be January in Brussels or August in Brussels. But, uh, apparently also could be uh, June in uh, Kursek. Uh, I have always a uh, reminder to all conference organizers inviting uh, Brussels bureaucrats is uh, a certain kind of risk of having a boring uh, presentation of the official light take of uh, European institution. So, but if they take this risk, uh, then I'm ready to deliver uh, on that. So, but possibly uh, I will give some insight uh, with a little bit general presentation, uh, but uh, could be part of your uh, wake-up uh, procedure uh, beyond the morning cafe. So, uh, let me start uh, with the presentation. I tried it on. With uh, an official language of the uh, European Union and one of the working languages of the European Commission, one of the three working languages, there is a quote uh, in German because it was a part of a German interview. And if somebody understands, could guess who said that. So. Uh, Europe is still the best uh, place in the world with the highest living standards, the biggest uh, freedom and uh, the most excellent cultural heritage. This is my, uh, my uh, pure... Who said that? Any guesses? This is Merkel. No. <laughs> Same party family. I help you. Other guess? Well, you know, but you shouldn't yeah. answer that. Yeah. Yes, it was Prime Minister Orban who, uh, who said that. Uh, yes, uh, I, ha I should have offered a special, special in German because it was a German in, uh, for a German paper. I think probably it was the Bill, uh, but not sure. So let me start. Why it is said, and he's right. Uh, according to United Nations, for all kind of. Uh, 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 measures like uh, they, they, they like to create such kind of uh, measures which can be well uh, advertised and used uh, uh, publicly like the Human Development Index published by the UNDP uh, which about the living standards, uh, uh, the, uh, the expected uh, uh, age, uh, the quality of uh, public services Green is the better, so you see which are the best places to live according to Human Development Index. Or which are the most peace, peaceful countries. You see the green, dark, dark green as the best ones. Uh, criminality, persons in jail, uh, international conflicts. Once again, Europe seems to be a good place. Or if you look at the Global Talent Competitiveness Index, which are the countries, which are the cities, uh, which are uh, attractive uh, to, uh, to uh, international talents according to the World Economic Forum. Uh, it's once, once again a complex uh, index. It directs very often to Europe and uh, European cities, even Brussels. Uh, so, Europe seems to be a, a good place. Uh, <coughs> it's up to us to think how much uh, the European Union as a community contributes to that, but if we think about peace uh, and uh, the, this community was created uh, to, uh, to maintain European peace and probably this is the biggest achievement uh, of the, this community, maintaining peace for such a long period and its contribution uh, through dialogue and, and, uh, and functioning institution is clear for that. But another aspect, uh, the, the economic uh, achievements, which contributes, of course, to the uh, development index and the, for example, the attractiveness for, for, for talents, uh, the contribution of the single market uh, to the Euro European economy uh, is uh, quite evident, but if, even if it's not evident, I haven't added a slide, that it contributes positively to the economy of all member states. So. Uh, Calculating all pluses and minuses, single market contributes positively to the economy of all member states. So without going to a long empirical research, I believe uh, European Union as a community contributes both to the peace and 
the uh, economic uh, stability and development of the uh, continent. So that's so fantastic I should stop here, yeah? because uh, <laughs> then there is no question. So let's very generally, let me illustrate some challenges. Sorry, the next one, I should be balanced, so there is another uh, language, uh, which is also the working language of the, uh, of, the, of the Commission, but it's quite evident, it's about um, population growth expected by 2050 uh, in uh, big world regions and continents. Look a little bit at uh, the, the, uh, the European Union, when it was projected, it was not calculated that who is leaving and who is coming, but it was uh, stability in the number of members. But you see the dynamics and compare it to India or Africa, uh, the variation in the third column, what we can expect by 2050, huge uh, changes. For example, population of Africa could increase uh, with double uh, size than the whole population of all continents. If we reflect on that, it's not a big uh, surprise. If you look at the share of Europe's economy in the world economy, the red is Europe. So it's, uh, you see all the centuries uh, after Christ or after, uh, through the centuries is red. And while Europe economy will grow, its share in the world economy will decrease as uh, the other uh, big uh, regions, like especially India, China, uh, will outgrow, uh, primarily for demographic reasons and, of course, uh, economic stability. Uh, India has the uh, most uh, dynamic growth. So Europe share might uh, decrease even though Europe's economy will grow. So look at the population shift. Uh, 190, 25% of the global population uh, lived in Europe and in 2060 to 4%. So changing demographics Europe's economic power will wane uh, in relative terms. Uh, and look at EU and member states' economy in the, in the world. Uh, that uh, shows that while in 2010 there were several European countries in the largest economies uh, in, the, in the world, in uh, 2050, only Germany probably will be in the, in the top 10. But the EU, the community, if, even if only 27, will be in the top 5, 2050. So it's, uh, it seems evident that Europe, with relatively small countries, because even Germany will be a small country in this comparison, will keep its economic influence and Potentially, it's a political influence if it cooperates, if it maintains the integration, and it seems so evident. But of course, there are the challenges. I don't go in much in detail. I just mentioned some. Uh, you have seen the democratic challenge. It's a huge challenge for many countries and Europe as a whole. Uh, there is another challenge. Globalization is a big, big challenge. It delivered lot of advantages for Europe, also economic uh, 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 growth for Europe, many regions of Europe, but left behind some parts of the society which we have, haven't paid enough attention. Not all uh, members of the society or all parts of the society look at the previous uh, industrial workers uh, groups uh, have uh, benefited from the uh, uh, globalization. So some groups of society were left behind. Another challenge which has been uh, uh, indicated, return of populist and nationalist rhetoric, not to mention uh, uh, eroding confidence in the, in the European project. So it was too fast, in the European project. Uh, what, uh, what was behind? 
not to mention the Brexit vote. I think all of those what I have mentioned, especially uh, forgotten parts of the society or Euroscepticism has uh, have uh, contributed uh, the vote on, the vote on uh, uh, Brexit. Have we forgotten something? Have we, have we forgotten the evidence which I have just presented before? I think yes. Uh, that's why I told we had a nice uh, presentation of the book about what, what, is, uh, uh, what was written on Brexit, and uh, I, I said uh, I don't want <coughs> to speak about too much about Brexit. So there is one positive side effect of this for me uh, negative decision. The positive side effect is alarm clock, because I believe we had a little bit of collective memory loss. Uh, which contributed to the increase in skepticism, we have forgotten some evidences, which I have started with, that what is the result, what are the benefits, what are the achievements uh, of uh, the uh, European integ integration. Uh, so apparently, uh, the Brexit itself, as a wake-up call, has delivered already results at the level of society. Because since that decision, it's become clear what we can lose possibly leaving the EU. Since then, the support for the EU membership uh, has started to grow nearly in every member state. There was no problem in Hungary, so it was always uh, over 70%, but also in other countries where it was not evident. But look at the programs of the former or still uh, Eurosceptic or considered Eurosceptic parties. I don't call them one by one, think about bigger member states uh, of France, uh, whose program previously was leaving the EU, leaving Europe, was, has changed completely to a Euro realist. Look at other member states where we uh, were a Eurosceptic party said, oh, we should leave the Eurozone. No, 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 we just review the role. So many, even Eurosceptic parties, changed their program because apparently the Brexit had a wake-up call and uh, clearly has illustrated what we might lose. Because we, we try to consider as given European peace, European economic growth, single market. If somebody followed Brexit, in the, some of the Brexit years, uh, uh, narrative is, oh, well, of course we remain in the single market, that's no problem, economically we'll be there. They use this, some of them use this. It's not like that. It's not like that. It's not evidence. Uh, so, there are some positive side effects. Also, there were some positive side effects for, uh, for the European integration and cooperation itself. If somebody looks at uh, the Bratislava or Rome Declaration, which goes much beyond some political commitments from the 27 member states, that for them, Europe is the framework to face with these and other challenges. And these concrete answers, I think, uh, without Brexit, we wouldn't have some, uh, such commitment. Uh, 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 and what are the big issues um, which we discuss uh, after uh, reading those commitments? So I think one is we have to have answers answers to those challenges, or at least actively search for those answers. How can we make uh, Europe more democratic or bring it closer to citizens? Because it was too distant, probably. If this evidence is forgotten, it's too distant. Then. How can we bring it closer? How can we address the challenges for those parts of the society who were not, uh, who hasn't benefited uh, the, uh, from, from globalization? Look at uh, the social pillar with its uh, many initiatives. It was the intention, and we agreed on that. 27 agreed on that. Nobody believed uh, a year ago that, that there will be agreement on the social pillar. But there is an agreement on the uh, social pillar which tries to uh, uh, address those uh, uh, challenges. How can we uh, bring closer Europe by uh, making it more democratic? How can we reflect on possible changes to the European elections, and so on and so on. And we have started a quite uh, open and exciting debate on the future of Europe. 
uh, which is a wider debate uh, than uh, uh, compared to previous uh, such, such such debates. Probably today, uh, today even could be part of the debate. Uh, I don't want to uh, present here the five scenarios uh, President Juncker, uh, President of the European Commission, uh, uh, prepared to, to facilitate and uh, give a framework for the debate because uh, then it would take uh, too much time. Let me highlight just, uh, uh, just uh, some elements, his, his prefer, preferred scenario, more united, stronger and more uh, democratic Europe. Uh, you see, some of the initiatives are there. Of there, I, I, I don't want to re repeat them. Let me highlight two words: inclusivity and stronger. So, uh, his intention and the Commission intention is to avoid any kind of initiative which would create first class, second class, and adult class in Europe. Europe. While multi spread is a reality, inclusivity, inclusivity is the answer. So. The Commission intends to promote <coughs> member states to be part of all key initiatives. Because what is Europe for us? Uh, the community itself, the single market, Schengen, Europe. So let's help those who are not part of Schengen to become part as soon as possible. Let's support those who are not members of the Eurozone, even financially, and look at the proposal for the next MFF. There is considerable facility to support those who want to join the Eurozone. And what inclusivity means? We don't support any kind of exclusive institutional setting. So inclusive means even somebody goes ahead or some member state goes, it should remain open for others. Because then there is no first and second class. If a member state now decides, no, I don't want to join yet the Eurozone because I think my economic uh, level of economic development should come closer to the European average. It is the member state's decision, even though gets support to join later, but it's not an exclusion for a club, because that would create second class Europe. But if it's inclusive, might get the support. Things happen, there is still, there are still uh, uh, initiatives uh, where a group of member states goes ahead, but it shouldn't be exclusive for those who are members, should be open for others, and they should get support to join uh, later. What stronger means? Uh, Europe is strong and Europe is weak. Europe is strong in economy, Europe is strong in trade, uh, Europe is strong in competition rules. Look at big multinationals, uh, they follow all kind of uh, recommendation of the European Commission. Uh, they, uh, they, they look at what kind of competition rules are coming because it's clear that Europe has become a world power in trade policy, competition policy and economy. It's not, not necessarily comparable with its political weight because of the powers the European institutions have in political uh, terms or foreign policy is not comparable uh, with the uh, economic. Very politely. Yeah, very not comparable. Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a European bureaucrat, so you know, I, that's what the no strongest problem. statement. Yeah, that's no the strongest problem. statement I might, I might have a, today. That's a, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, there is another wake up call. So, I spoke about an alarm clock. There is another wake up call, uh, which I don't like at all. The initiative itself because it questions, I think, somehow uh, the international world order, uh, the uh, tariff initiatives of the of the uh, US administration. Let's let's think about together, and this is a little bit my reflection also to, to the V4 countries. Let's think think together. Um, because there is a hesitation to to delegate more power to the US. I think U.S. administration recent initiatives or uh, some of the narrative uh, is a wake-up call for Europe that in some issues we might rely on ourselves only, on nobody else. So 
yes, we are powerful in trade. Uh, we are not so powerful probably in foreign policy or in defense. But we should reflect on a situation where we might feel alone. So if we don't reflect on a possibility for a deeper integration, possibly uh, empowering institution on other fields than trade and economy, uh, that could be challenging. I think uh, uh, Europe is a bit more alone than it was before and should reflect on how it can uh, be stronger in foreign policy, in politics, because keeping that international influence, which I am reflecting on, will be essential in the future. And uh, with possibly with quicker and more decisive measure, measure, stronger single market, effective eurozone governance, global influence, defense union, some of those, for example, qualified majority decision in foreign policy, which is according to the treaty is, is possible, just uh, in one example, one of the fields of reflection, just mentioned uh, one of those. And I think it's also important, uh, just to close with a, uh, a V for Central European uh, comment, that I think uh, I think we have to reflect on that uh, possible uh, long-term uh, integration and cohesion within uh, the European uh, community. I think even uh, on some of the issues of today, probably more important than uh, some good uh, bilateral gestures with third countries, uh, which I think should be an aspect for uh, developing more uh, foreign policy and uh, reflecting on uh, the European integration. Well, thank you.